On this week's episode of the Crush and Debt Podcast, Money Hacks. Welcome to the Crushing Debt Podcast with your host, Florida attorney, Sean Yesner, where our goal is to help you get rid of the financial bullies in your life. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, owner and founder of Yesner Law, and welcome back your financial coach, George Cabello. How you doing, George? How are you, sir? I'm happy and uh, good to, you know, feeling good and, and, you know, saving money and spending money and, you know, just uh, doing all the things we're supposed to be doing with money. So I'm happy about it. Yeah, spending money. I... So as this comes out, I'll be a couple of weeks removed. But as we're recording, I just got back from vacation. I did do. How you? It looked good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, well rested. Nice. Had a great time. No laptop. You, you at least did, did, did dis- not bring my laptop. Did not bring my iPad. The only thing I had on me was my cell phone. Nice. So just enough to kind of forward a message if necessary, and that's about all I did. And the uh, the office didn't. No, no fires. No issues. Everything was no, good. It looks. I mean, it looks like it's still. <laughs> Four walls and front door. Plumbing and... still works. We're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. In this building, that's a stretch. But everything's still doing what it's supposed to be doing. So yeah, so we're so we're back a little bit lighter in the pocketbook, having gone go. on vacation, but uh, but totally, totally worth it. For those that don't know, we were in Arizona. Yep. So flew in and out of Phoenix, spent a couple of days in Scottsdale. Have you ever been to Great Wolf Lodge? No. Uh, yes, I have in Pennsylvania, I think. Okay. Uh, that's a great... Great uh, family-oriented type of uh, scenario, for sure. We loved it. We were at the Great Wolf Lodge for two days in Scottsdale. Uh, I didn't know. The closest one to us is in, like, the Atlanta-ish area. Um, But they're building one in Naples. Nice. So the Naples Great Wolf should be open in 2024. I think we're already kind of making plans to head down there. Kids had a great time. I did the ropes course. <laughs> that survived? Okay. Yeah, and survived. No broken bones. Okay. <laughs> me, and my, me and my younger son did the ropes course. My older one didn't want to do it. So me and my younger one did the ropes course. Had all the, for those that haven't been, indoor water park was amazing. Yeah. All the stuff inside the park was amazing. So spent a few days in Scottsdale, then spent the rest of the time in Flagstaff. Uh, went to a place called Barizona. 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 Okay. So you're driving around, and all the animals are loose. You are driving through in your car their habitat. Wow. Oh yeah, it said they're big signs when you get to the bear and wolf enclosures, and and they had the the grates on the ground, right? So that didn't affect your your rubber tires. But I assume if a person had stepped on the grate or or an animal had stepped on the grate, they'd be shocked. Nah. Uh, to keep the animals separated. But uh, yeah, as you're driving, bears on literally right on there. the side of the road, uh, wolves on the side of the road, moose or meese. Uh, what's the <laughs> moose? Mooses. Mooses. <laughs> um, right there on the side of the road. And uh, yeah, they say when you get to the bear and the wolf enclosures, keep your windows up. Whoa. Okay. So, Pretty cool. Yeah. Did nice that. experience, I'd imagine. Did uh, Sedona, uh, took a train up to the Grand Canyon. Um, yeah, had a had a really good time. We had fun in in Arizona, and then took. Uh, I still think now, even a week later, I still think I'm on Mountain Time. <laughs> I still think a jet lag from two hours. Okay, oh, there, I buddy. Still, I'll, I'll give you th- that. Oh, three I'm sorry, hours. Three. I'm sorry. Three hours. Three hours. <laughs> so, but no, we had it. We had a great time. Uh, rested, recharged, uh, ready to get back to it. But uh, today we are talking about. Money hacks. Now, before we get there, I do want to mention our sponsors. The first one I want to talk about is Mark Purvis. Uh, He is our editor, our longtime editor since episode one. He's got a website called LegacySpotlight.com. So if you want to capture those stories, you take a family vacation and you want to capture the story of that vacation to tell to future generations. Uh, Remember the old days where you used to uh, go over to grandma and grandpa's house and they would have the the projector set up, and they would click the projector. Through, click you're all you're the uh, aging yourself, there, buddy. Am, am I dating myself here? <laughs> a little bit, but yes, but, I, I I think we were. You know, that, it was that Betamax and all yeah. that. <laughs> but with Legacy Spotlight, you don't have to do that. You, you don't just have to do anymore. Talk about the trip and and have it preserved that way. So if you want to get a hold of Mark, he makes it fun. LegacySpotlight.com. But uh, money hacks, and you know, we looked prior to starting the episode. We may have talked about some of this stuff here and there, but I don't think we've ever done uh, an entire episode just on money hacks. Right. So what do you mean by money hacks? So it's, you know, everyday 
we have something we do to be able to kind of save ourselves money. It's a, you know, or or not have to spend that money. And what we're trying to put in this episode here is really like, what are some of the things that you do to kind of keep the dollars in your pocket? And it doesn't necessarily always have to be like, you know, your envelope system. I, I get those kind of things. I'm like, what do you, what do you, what are the little things that you do each day? Do you, do you, uh, you know, uh, make coffee? You know, instead of going to Starbucks, that's that for me is the little things that we can do that kind of it feels like a hack. We're like, okay, this is a way of me saving money and being able to put more po- money in my pocket to do other things. That that's what I that's kind of what I'm looking at as part of this. And I'll give you an example that you know I gave you the coffee one. I'll start off easy for you, right? We go you, when you go to the theater. Right? <laughs> are you bring Are you bringing snacks, or are you going to the content? You know, contention. The, the concession, concession stand. stands. Yeah, so <laughs> I can talk. I really can. Did you Did you hear about the the robbery at the at the movie theater the other day? I did not. And I, the, they, what's they, the story? They got away with uh, a bottle of water, uh, a small popcorn, and a diet coke. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars worth of damages. <laughs> All right, this guy's got jokes. I love it. No, okay. But no, dude, I mean that's for me that's a, you know, like what do what do you normally do? And again, you know, no one no one's getting arrested. It's no there's no uh, you know, there's no law or anything that we're going to break, you know, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> no, that's so I do I do the coffee one. Uh, we have a Korg. I make coffee and not only that, but I buy my coffee uh, Bogo um, at Publix. I buy the Korg pods bogo in right. public so you know whatever happens to be now there are some that i don't like that i won't ever buy but whatever happens to be on bogo and if it's my favorite a brand of coffee i'll buy even more of buy, it right uh if it's on bogo the other thing is people know that i drink coffee so they give me starbucks gift cards so ah. i haven't had to buy my own cup of coffee in years so just between those two hacks uh you know because a cup of coffee at starbucks is what like Two, three bucks, four bucks. Oh, I think it's a lot more than that, Seven. my friend. It's, I haven't bought it, one in it's, years. It's it's gotten there in price, so definitely, you know, I wish you. I think it was three dollars. I think we're still we're hitting the seven dollar range. Well, I guess range. It depends on what you buy. You know, it's funny. I walked into Starbucks because I'm also uh, as part of the app. I'm part of their loyalty, their stars yep. program thing, and I walk up. So I guess I, I don't know if they still do it, but on your birthday they'd give you a free cup of coffee. And so I walk up on my birthday one day and said, I'd like to get my free cup of coffee. And they were like, what would you like? I'm like, coffee. <laughs> no, dude. That's They're not. like, you don't want the fancy with the, the shot of espresso. The shot of the, mocha, mocha, blah, 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 blah. The, I'm like, no, I just want... <laughs> I just want coffee. Just black coffee, thank just you. Just coffee, put some <laughs> put some sweetener and some cream in it. Coffee, oh, I'm good. Love it. Um, I don't really do this, the theater snacks, but we don't really go to a lot of movies. Yeah, so my family and I, uh, when we came out of COVID itself, we did definitely went more to the movies. Uh, we took advantage of like the movie pass as well. So again, that one monthly fee yeah. where you can go like three times a week. Um, that that I thought well we we did a lot of those kind of uh, movies you know in the family on a weekly basis we did bring snacks once in a while now again once in a while you you know love that movie uh, popcorn with yeah. the extra butter and give you you know cholesterol clogging it's beautiful but at the end of the day we were kind of like you know it's funny how a lot of these theaters if you notice there's always like a five below or a dollar mm-hmm. general next to it and it's like dude they're tempting you like, oh they just know go go to this place get yourself. You know, the candy, get, you know, whatever snacks you're looking for um, and just bring it in. You know, my wife has the the backpack, so it's like yeah. kind of bring it in that way. So that's that's strategic. Though, yeah. Having those there. The other thing that I was thinking is um, buying in bulk, you know, yep. Costco's and Sam's Clubs and BJ Warehouses and all those kinds of things. And I actually took advantage of that this weekend. So both of my boys uh, bring to school those um, insulated water bottles yep. that keep the water cold all day. And and both of them have broken and I'm like, we've got like two weeks left of school, man. Can, can't we Come tough on. it out? Um, happened to be at Target yesterday buying a birthday present for one of my, my kid's friends for a birthday mm-hmm. party he was going to. And I saw the, the water bottles there, the 12-ounce water bottles there were like twenty four ninety nine, yep, something like that. Uh, well, I also do all my Costco shopping on Sunday or every other Sunday is how it works out. Uh, and for, I think it was a 28-ounce a or a 32-ounce a pack of two, either 28 or 32 ounce bottles. So more than more Just room right, than right. what I got at Target. Uh, and I think it was either like 16.99 or 19.99. So 
for the cost of one 12 ounce water bottle, I walked away with two 28 ounce or 32 right. ounce water bottles. Look for the um, deal, right? Yeah. So you know, buying in bulk. Now, buying in bulk only works if you're going to use it. Yeah, and that's that's where spoil. I would be careful. Is especially like if you buy in bulk for like uh, the consumables or you know lettuce. Get 15 pounds of lettuce. If you're not going to eat it, <laughs> I would imagine it's you start to lose the you yeah. lose the value of buying in bulk. So I definitely uh, agree with you there. But only buy stuff. You know, I don't buy coffee from Costco or or Sam. I guess it's cheaper per pod. Yep. But it just would take me forever to go through it, and I'd get bored with and it. And where do so you I store don't... it? Right, and that's the thing. Usually, if they don't have a variety pack, you're drinking the same coffee for the next, you know, 16 years. Right. So I would be careful with that, too. I'll combine two of them with, the you know, your target, you know, that you had just mentioned here. Costco, as well, you had mentioned, they have discounts on gift cards, meaning if I buy, you know, like a four-pack it's instead of, of, of $75 or whatever the value might be, it costs you 73 right. There's opportunities there where you get the discounted gift cards. There's, you know, sometimes they're really big. You know, like, yeah, you're like $2. $2 is, what, what's $2? But $2 goes a long way, if, you know, grocery-wise. But I've seen, I've seen, you know, when they have uh, sales at, like, Sam's Club yeah. and those, you can get a, you know, gift card, $75 get, gift card for, like, you know, 70 bucks or, yeah, or, or $68. What I saw was, like, 100 bucks in gift cards for, like, 80 bucks. Exactly. That, that's, $100 in gift cards to some restaurant for, like, 80 bucks. The other thing that I don't know if, you know, I used to, because one of my hacks when I go on vacation is I get gift cards. Yep. And and that way I'm, I'm using gift cards. A lot of places still, too, today won't take cash yet. So I do a lot of gift cards. What I kept running into was a problem was I'd get the gift card all the way down to 27 cents or 80 cents or $3 or something like that. And unless you know exactly what's on the card, a lot of places won't let you use it except for those of you that are in Florida or in the Southeast and you have a Publix near you. Or, or maybe your grocery store, if you're listening to this, will do this. So my grocery store, it'll just take whatever's on the card. Right. So I ended up using like the last, you know, $12 on three or four different gift cards this weekend by buying groceries at Publix. And I just used them up that way where before I'd be tempted to say, you know, it's got five cents on it. Let me toss it. Ooh, yeah, money's money. Right. But now I can, you know, it'll you can use it without... It's going to take me 10 minutes to look up how much is on the <laughs> stupid card. I might as well throw it away. Right. Well, but by using it at the grocery store, I don't care how much is on it. I just I just use it up, and then when they're gone, I, I toss them. I like it. You don't realize, you know, five cents goes, five cents is five cents. You know, two dollars. A lot of us do that with like a dollar uh, left on those kind of cards. But I, I agree. I think find, find a way to, you know, make it easier for you, but, you know, don't don't leave money. Uh, in cards or, or not use it because of, you know, inconvenience. That's yeah. one of those. One of the things I saw in this article you sent me, this article is, uh, what is it? Fool.com, <laughs> www.fool, F-O-O-L.com. <laughs> these 10 simple money life hacks, or these 10 simple life hacks can save you money. One that I saw that was interesting, switch off the vampire devices. Oh, that's... <laughs> we, should, we should save that for Halloween. That's funny. Um, but you know what that means, though, right? Yeah. Devices that are connected to the power and consume electricity even when they're not Correct. being used. TV is one. Right. You know, I, I, if gaming consoles, if you have kids, you know, that's another... Um, phone chargers for char- phone char- right exactly and that's the one that's easy where it's like it's always even though you are not connect you know it's not connected it's still consuming a small amount of electricity how do you easily you know deal with those switching it off you know, it, it comes back to your plug surge protector you know it might right. be easy to switch off the surge protector turn it on when you need it um, I think that's one way to to kind of get around that yeah my son has in my older son's bedroom he's got the ceiling fan with the light on it yep. so when we turn on the ceiling fan we turn on the light but then he's got a switch in the room you know a switch on the wall right what we learned is that switch on the wall controls the the outlet where we happen to have the the gaming system plugged in ah so we just turn that off at night and that turns off the tv and the gaming switch and the smart whole, just cuts off power to that whole thing uh but yeah you know i I finally realized what my dad was talking about when, you know, every light in the house is on. 
I find myself doing that from time all to the time. time. Are you kidding me? I follow my kids because it's like, let me turn on the living room, the kitchen, our bedroom, their bedroom, the bathroom. The, you know, I'm like, guys. So I'm following them all around the house, just turning them off. I'm like, let me show you how this is done. When oh, you leave a room, e- turn e- off the light. Today, leaving the house, I'm like, boys, are your are your lights off in your room? <laughs> turn your lights off in your room. So <laughs> it's uh, we sound like old men here, guys, uh, but do. that's uh, that's okay. I'll forgive us. You know, that's a pardon for both of us here. What else? What else do you I, have? I, I have another one, I, and I think I mentioned this before. It's the, the library is such a source of information, it's a source of videos and books, articles, newspapers, but it's you know, a lot of that is it's publicly funded and it's free, you know, it's available to you. They have now also a lot of digital apps, Hoopla, Libby. That right. allows you to, you know, I know Audible uh, gives you these these kind of books for for um, a price, but the library, the local library, has apps that allows you to be able to borrow certain amount of books per month, and it's both magazines to audio books to just regular books. From it's like I don't think enough people take advantage of that. No, I, I think it's it's a huge benefit to to a lot of folks. Well, and even the library by me, they have a used bookstore out front that they use to raise money for the library. Right, but you can get some awesome books for two dollars. Yep, I think I think the they've gone up now. I think a hardcover is either two or three dollars, and a inflation is even is hitting our libraries. Yeah. Oh gosh! But still, for three, and I've gotten some classic books. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the library for for two or three dollars, I've got to say, even for uh, you know podcast re- research and just you know learning more, there are a ton of uh, books about debt reduction and habits, money habits, all of those kind of things. A lot of that's available through the library. Take advantage of that. That for me is a you, huge, you know, shameless plug. You could also get <laughs> become debt free. There you go for free ah. from my website. Make too. sure you put it in the show notes. There like. you go. I will. <laughs> Click a link. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can get that book for free as well. So, there you go. Uh, and I think Crushing Debt, the Crushing Debt book is only a few dollars on it. I think it's still some reduced price. I, I dropped the price during COVID to entice people to buy it, and I don't think I've adjusted it back yet. One of the things that I saw from another one of these articles, and I'm going to combine two of them, always bring a list when you go to the store yep. and make a meal plan so you aren't tempted to eat out. Uh, and I think both of those, you know, what I, I typically always make dinner on Sundays mm-hmm. or Saturdays at home, part of it because I like grilling, but mm. uh, I typically always make dinner on Fridays or Saturdays uh, or Sundays. Uh, we don't really eat out as often as we used to. Maybe we eat out once a week, maybe. That's okay, um, yeah. We, and, you know, according to my wife, it is a lot more healthy to eat at home than to eat out because you're not having to deal with a lot of preservatives that a lot of the restaurants use to keep yep. their ingredients fresh while they're while they're trying to, you know, buy up a bulk amount of uh, ingredients to make your dinner, too. And I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what my wife says, so I have to believe it. I, I believe your wife as well, because my wife has said the same thing. So unless there's a huge conspiracy uh, on the uh, on the ingredients, but you know what's going into your, yeah, when your you meals. Home, like, you know what's going into That's it. the difference. I think my, my wife is huge of like, hey, if you have allergies, gluten allergies, any of those kind of things, you can control what's going into your meal. Um, and I, lo- I love the idea, like making a salad on a Sunday, you have it for, you know, a Sunday, Monday, maybe even Tuesday, depending on what kind of salad you make. Same thing with like crock pot meals. We make it, you know, a good meal on one day and I'm a big leftover. So like there is no way we're wasting food. A, a good lunch, you know, a, a small portion, but having something the next day heated up and you have your lunch there. That's another opportunity to really, you know, save on, on some of those dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I am a huge leftover fan. Thanksgiving's one of my favorite holidays. <laughs> that's a huge, I'm a huge. That's a huge example of that. Okay, I got you there. fan. <laughs> I try to. Although you know, that's how you get. You know, that's how you get the dad bod. It's, yeah. The, the kid, the kids don't eat their share, and so you're like, fine, I don't want it to go yeah, away. I don't want so I'll eat it. <laughs> So. Give me the mashed potatoes. It's okay. You know, put them over here. Stuffing, excuse me, and the stuffing is amazing too. Much. Yeah. So no, no, I uh, no shame there. What else? I would say the other one. And this is a funny one. I I, I kind of saw this uh, out there too. But like, do you you know get more out of ink, more ink out of your printer? Meaning like, um, like if your black is running low, and you're like, let me switch the font to like. <laughs> <laughs> a lighter color, a different color, so that you can, you know, stretch your printer. I mean, it sounds funny, 
But I'm like, okay, that's kind of genius, you know, unless you have a toner, you know, a, a toner from your printer itself, extending the life of your printer based off of, you know, what you're printing. That's, it's, it's just an idea in regards. But I just, I heard that. I was like, okay, that's, that's actually not bad. You know, something along those same lines reminded me of the refrigerator filter. I had a, an appliance repair person tell me once when that uh, – we have on our refrigerator a little sensor that goes off that says it's time to replace right. the, the filter. Mm -hmm. When that sensor goes off the first time, that doesn't necessarily mean the filter is bad. Change it right. It doesn't necessarily mean you got to change it right then. You can reset the filter, and it should be good for – however much longer now the second time it goes off then you then we change it gotcha and so i don't know if that's true or not a repair person told me that we've been doing that for a while now so far you know the water in my refrigerator seems to be clean you know, the it's water not coming out, out the it's ice not coming up water, dark they come out seem to be clean <laughs> uh, along the same lines ac maintenance okay air conditioner maintenance so i have on my calendar once a month I go and I, I pour bleach into the drain line of my air conditioner. Okay. Uh, so, that, you know, where it drains from the, from the air conditioner to the outside. I put bleach down there. The problem is if I don't put bleach down there, it all gets all gunked up and, and it gets all and, – and then I got to call a repair person. Well, what's the price difference between a bottle of bleach – and calling a repair person to come out and fix your AC when it, when it breaks. True. So, you know, every month I pour a little bit of bleach down the drain line, and then every other month I replace the AC filter. And if I do those two things consistently, I save myself on the repair bills to the AC unit, which ends up saving me money. Nice. Okay, there you go. That's a good one right there. I, like, I, I kind of like that. Now, would, would anybody be tempted? <laughs> You're like, wait a second, where, where did this scientific experiment go? Uh, but that, I think it's a, it's a great idea, and it's, it's preventative. It's kind it's of preventative. like, that's all. Well, I'll give you another one then. <laughs> this one, this one I, I kinda, when I read the title, it was like, you know, okay, why would you do this? But pour Kool-Aid in your toilet. <laughs> and and Sean's face exactly what I said when in my head too. I was like, "What? What does Kool Aid clean the toilet?" No, no, <laughs> that's what I thought too. If it cleans the toilet, imagine what it's doing to your insides. Put it in. So they're saying put it in the tank, okay, and don't flush it for an hour. If the color, uh, for some reason, goes away, that means you have a leak. Oh wow! So it's you know. So once again, the small leaks. Uh, in toilets, uh, that one I remember, I had a small leak probably in my older home itself. That ran up my water bill, and, and it was just, it was a small, you know, slight leak, but it said like it added 20 to $40 extra because of because of the uh, the leak that was I wouldn't have found it if I didn't know about it but yeah. just little things like that. I was like, okay, like cool it. Okay, Kool Aid. I mean, it's kind of weird, but. Again, preventative. Oh, don't don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't drink the Kool-Aid from the toilet. From That's the toilet. Good idea. The toilet hack that I always used to do, especially when I was in college, you put a brick in the tank. Okay. And the reason you put a brick in the tank is the toilet doesn't need all of the water in the tank in order to be able to flush effectively. Okay. So when you put a brick in the toilet, you're taking up space in the tank. Mm. So your tank is using less water to flush the toilet. Got it. And over time... You're gonna. It was funny. I got into a argument with one of my former roommates. I had a a girlfriend when I was in college that would come over and you know, as girlfriends do, spend the night from time to time, and would take a shower in the morning before she went home or you know before she got on with her day, whatever she was going to do. He was complaining because you know she had long hair. He and I were both losing our hair, and he was like, "She's using too much water." I'm like, "Dude, you've got." He had his. He had three or four fish tanks in the house. Jeez. His smallest tank was a 55. Oh, my gallon. goodness. Okay. I'm like, you're complaining about my girlfriend taking a shower yeah. once or twice a week where you're doing water changes <laughs> on 55-gallon <laughs> tanks yep. every month? I mean, give me a break. But but still, you know, sh quicker showers will save you water. Um, you know, showering together will save you water. <laughs> All right there, Romeo. Relax there, champ. <laughs> but no, the the brick in the toilet. I offset, like that idea. To so offset the water between, in the tank. So we got a a brick and Kool Aid. Not not bad. Not bad for there for that. Go. Here's the one I've again I ran across as well. And these are funny. I'm I'm trying to be, you know trying to be a little humorous here. But uh, zip pants before washing. 
<laughs> Once again, so let's think about it. If the pants are down those ridges, they can actually rip into other clothes when they're in the spin cycle. When they're in washing with other clothes, it could damage you know, T-shirts, snag on socks, snag on T-shirts itself, huh. it actually could damage some of the other uh, clothes that you wash it with. So it, it's silly, but, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is not your normal everyday hack. This is just like, hey, if you're preserving, uh, you know, some of the clothes, here's another opportunity. Now, whether it's a good one or not, I'm just saying that's what I'm coming across here. God, I'm trying to think. I can't think of any that are that cool. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do here, man. Oh, do you uh, do you do extended warranty plans? Never. Okay. That's another life hack. It's up. Why do you not do that, my friend? Why do What's I... your reason for not doing the extended? Pa- you know, you need the extended plan on the uh, you know on the uh, the the electric comb that you that you purchase. Yeah. So why, why would you do? Why would you not do it? Let's so put it like that. I'll give you I'll give you a real life example. Uh, I just got a laptop computer mm-hmm. in the last I don't know six eight months. I got a new laptop, which has allowed me to do a lot more from home and be a lot more remote and be a lot more efficient. Uh, I had to buy a mouse for the laptop, so okay. went to Best Buy. Found a mouse, a wireless mouse. I think the the mouse itself was fourteen dollars. Okay. I think I get to the front of the line to pay, and they said, "Do you want the extended warranty on the mouse?" <laughs> How much is it? It's twelve. Twelve dollars for a fourteen. <laughs> Why am I going to spend twelve dollars oh, yeah. to replace a fourteen dollar mouse? Because they're fifteen ho- dollar mouse. They're hoping you'll need it. So you don't have to worry about it the next yeah. time. You, it, wh- how long is this mouse going to last you? I think it's years, I this, would imagine. The mouse that I have here for my office computer, <laughs> 10 years? <laughs> exactly. 15 years? Well, something like that. I'm glad so, you didn't get the extended warranty. No. And I think they do that on the TVs. They do that on some of the other bigger appliances. But what's the likelihood of like the TV breaking down? In that time period. That's what they're banking for. In that time period. In that time period. And then, of course, you have to do all the work in regards to filing the claim, taking the product in, to, you know, bringing it in, and then seeing seeing if the, the, the you know, the part-time person at the, at the front of the line itself will say, yeah, 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 we'll replace... We'll, we'll replace your uh, your device based off of you know the the extended warranty, and I always miss it by like two days anyway. If yeah. I, I remember early on, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned early on in my in my uh, accounting classes early on that warranties are a great way for companies to make money. Yeah, absolutely, the number of times that you actually. The, the number of times that people will cash in a warranty, whether because the thing breaks outside the warranty or they forget to do it or it's inconvenient to do it, whatever, the, the number of warranties that actually get cashed in is very, very it's low. very low. Yep, that's very, it. Very, very low. So I, I never buy warranties. Nice money business. So that's, I totally agree with you there. Right, so. We should find a way to offer. <laughs> if you don't save money listening to this podcast... If you buy the warranty, buy the extended warranty to guarantee you, you'll get something. We will unlisten. <laughs> we will figure out how to take the audio out of your head. <laughs> no, unlisten. Keep listening. This is a good thing. <laughs> I think we, you know, that was a lot of good ones. Yeah. I, I, I'm thinking, and, and I, you have your envelope system, you have your, you know, separate accounts. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of the things that prevent you from from saving, we can probably do those in the uh, after pod kind of episode itself. But I, I think I think these are, you know, have a little fun. We're trying yeah. to have a little fun here as well. Yeah, exactly. I've got a couple that I can mention in the uh, in the after show. But uh, before we get there real quick, uh, let me talk about uh, our other sponsor, Sam Cohen. He's with Attorneys First Insurance. He provides errors and omissions or malpractice coverage to attorneys and title companies uh, all over the country, whether you're here with us in Florida, whether you're in Texas, Alaska, anywhere in the country, Sam can quote you in apples to apples uh, with what you've got now. If you're an attorney or title company that needs uh, malpractice insurance, even if maybe you've had a claim in the past, Sam can find you coverage. So thank you, Sam, for being a long, long time supporter of the show. Uh, also need to mention our Patreon page, the Crushing Debt uh, always, Patreon always. page. Thank you to all of our patrons that support the show there. All of that money uh, goes back into the show to do some cool stuff here for you all for the show. And then all of our social media channels. So I figured out 
Facebook keeps changing the way they do yes, things. They do. And, and it used to be that the podcast would automatically post uh, to Facebook. And now it doesn't do that anymore. But with the, um, the AWeber, the email marketing system that we use for the podcast, that will promote the email that goes out every week talking about the podcast right. uh, to the Yesner Law Facebook page as well as the link there from the Yesner Law Facebook page. Nice. So. So uh, we did kind of figure out a way to hack uh, the Facebook <laughs> system, and so if you want to, if you want to learn more about the yes, the uh, Crushing Debt podcast, you can always go to the Yesner Law uh, Facebook uh, website, also the Curbelo Financial TikTok page, uh, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, Instagram. I try to do all of those kind of things, but yes, still having fun, but at the same time. Um, you know, just trying to learn something each, uh, every time we do some old phobie, I, I do some old videos, but I try to, try to teach you something. So keep, yeah, keep, keep gonna, on following. I've been saying it's, it's the beginning of the year, but one day I'll get some new videos up. I promise. <laughs> there so, you go. Uh, 2023 goals. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll write it down. 2024 goals. <laughs> Getting those. Start work, early. Working on those early. <laughs> so, uh. Other than that, anything else you want to add, George? It's been a pleasure, a fun time, and you know, go go save some money out there. There's always there's always a, and, and if you have any comments, you know, if you have a life hack that you or a money hack that you want to kind of tell us, uh, send it our way. We'll, we'll bring it up in a in a future episode. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know. But I think that'll do it uh, for this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Hopefully, these money hacks will help you have more money at the end of the month rather than month at the end of the money. And we will talk to you in next week's episode. If you have questions that you think would make a great topic for a future episode, please email Sean or connect with us on social media. Sean Yesner and Yesner Law PL are Florida licensed attorneys. The information contained in this week's episode is not a substitute for legal advice. Your situation may differ, especially if you are located somewhere other than the state of Florida. If you have questions, please contact our office or contact a local attorney. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Podcast.